Na začetku svoje vojaške karijeri je bilo mu celo rešil življenje zajetemu britanskemu komandosu, ki so ga krajevni fašistični voditelji obsodili na smrt, ker je ostrelil dva civilista. Belo mu je trdil, da je bilo komandoso v ravnanje samo obramba in ne vojni zločin in uspelo mu je preprečiti v smrtitev. Na žalost za Beloma se je med njegovim sojenjem pokazalo, da britanskega foreign officea olajševalne okoliščine preprosto ne zanimajo. 8. septembra 45. je poslanec Saevor Thomas dobil odgovor H. McNeela iz zunanjega ministerstva glede prošnje reja za naklonjenost. Zunanje ministerstvo je skrbno pregledalo zapisnih sojenja. Kaže, da je bil postopek upravljen normalno in popolnoma pravično in da so generala Beloma nazadnjo obsodili, ker je zagrešil posebno strahopeten umor, za katerega ne vidimo nobenih olejševalnih okoliščin. Razumeli boste, da bi bil v tej državi odziv javnega mnenja na neupravično pomilostitev dokazanega vojnega zločinca skrajno nezaželen. The British had it in for Belomo because they wanted to have someone as a sacrificial lamb to make it as an example for the brutal treatment of Allied POWs at the hands of the Italians, particularly in North Africa during the war. And so what happened? Evidence disappeared. Witnesses weren't allowed to show up. Belomo wasn't allowed to see an Italian lawyer. Uh, he was given the services of an inexperienced, incompetent British lawyer. Of course, he was convicted over the protest of some of the British uh, correspondents who attended the trial, and he was executed. What is the supreme irony is that the British shot the only anti-fascist general in the Italian army at a time they were covering up so many known Italian war criminals. Generale Bellomo was given the opportunity of escaping before the sentence. Uh, my father uh, was allowed to visit him with a car ready for the escape, and the guard was very far from his guard position. Certainly he got instruction for that. So discrediting Belloma was probably sufficient, but Belloma did not, did not accept to escape, uh, because this was against his military honor. Leta 1947, ko so Jugoslovani vse bolj pritiskali tako na italijansko vlado kot na zaveznike in zahtevali izročitev vojnih zločincev, so italijani prek britanskega veleposlanika v Rimu poslali britancem in američanom predlog. Italijansko ministerstvo za zunanje zadeve predlaga, da bi za zmanjšanje jugoslovanskega pritiska po 45. členu mirovne pogodbe vlada njegovega veličanstva in vlada ZDA ločeno zavrnili nadaljne zahteve po izročitvi italijanskih vojnih zločincev in izjavili, da prepuščata sojenje in kaznovanje vseh še nearetiranih italijanskim sodiščem. V šest tednov zatem so američani objavili sporazum z italijansko vlado. Z njim so prepustili sojenje vsem preostalim vojnim zločincem, krivih zločino proti zavezniškemu vojaškemu osebju, italijanskim sodiščem. Britanci so na to sledili temu zgledu. Zavezniki so postavili precedenčni primer, ki je učinkovito izničil vse jugoslovanske zahteve po več kot 800 italijanih seznama Komisije Združenih narodov za vojne zločine. The Western allies using their important role in the UNWCC dismissed many Yugoslav request ignored many Yugoslav files because they were eager not to support the demands of the Yugoslav government which was considered as an ally of the Soviet Union. They considered this Cold War as a danger to peace, as a danger of a new war and therefore they decided to prevent the Soviet Union getting information on intelligence problems and protecting people who could be used as experts in military technology. Another pretext in dismissing many files of the Yugoslavs was that they are not properly prepared. But this was an artificial argumentation because the Yugoslav members of the United Nations or Crimes Commission were brilliant lawyers and like Professor Zhivkovic, an expert in international law, and the files submitted by them were well prepared and documented. By 1948, it was pretty clear that the Yugoslavs weren't going to get anywhere with their request for extradition of Italian war criminals. By that point, the British and Americans had renounced their own right to extradite Italians for crimes against Allied POWs. This put the Yugoslavs in a very poor position to make extradition requests for crimes that had been committed in their country. Also by 48, you have to realize there was the split between Marshal Tito, dictator of Yugoslavia, and Stalin. 
By that point, Yugoslavia not only was in a weak legal position, but its political position was such that, I, that by 48 there was no real chance anymore of any real trials of Italian war criminals. Etiopski primer pa se obravnavali šele spomladi leta 1948 na zadnjem sestanku Komisije Združenih narodov za vajne zločine. Etiopic se je zastopal švet, baron Erik Lejonhofvut. Komisija je sklenila, da bo izmed več sto primerov, ki jih je pripravila Etiopija, izbrala skupino desetih primerov. Prvi na seznamu je bil primer maršala Pietra Badolija, ki so ga obtoževali uporabe strupenega plina in bombardiranja bolnišnic srdečega križa. Britanci so se nemudoma postavili Badolju v bran. There is nothing which actually proved Badolio responsible for the decision to use it. Irrespective of whether commander did or did not issue orders for the commission of crimes, it was their duty to watch over their subordinates and undertake steps to prevent crimes from being perpetrated. The Japanese general Yamashita was convicted on this ground. I feel quite certain that Badolio, as chief in command and responsible for carrying out the whole campaign, must in some way have been implicated in the decision to use prison gas, since it was a decision which must have had to be taken on a very high level. Yes, yes, but regarding the bombardment of Red Cross hospitals and ambulances, it's clear from the correspondence that there was some element of doubt that the bombing was deliberate. This had not been the view of the British government in 1935-36, when they refused every argument put forward by the Italian Foreign Office to excuse the bombardment of British medical teams in Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the first time in history when Red Cross units were continuously persecuted, and that was observed by the representatives of the Italian Red Cross. The bombardments of those places actually occurred while Badoglio was in command on the spot. Etiopice so podprli norveški in češki člani. In komisija je izglasovala, da Badolja v vrstijo ne se zna ma kot vojnega zločinca zaradi uporabe plina in napadov na bolnišnice rdečega križa. Men nasproti je bilo v Gracijanije v primeru. Ne se zna ma so ga vrstili zaradi devetih obtožb. Tudi pre ostalih osem fašistov je komisija uvrstila na se znam zaradi zločinov v Etiopiji. Kot mnoge nekdaj okupirane države so tudi Etiopici organizirali svoje državne komisije za vojne zločine, da bi sodili italijanom s seznama. Leta 1949 je italijanska vlada zavrnila zahtevo Etiopije za izročitev Badolja in Gracijanija. 17. septembra je etiopski veleposlanik v Londonu, dr. Reta, o primeru seznanju Britansko zunanje ministrstvo. Britanci so etiopskemu veleposlaniku dejali, da imajo zahteve za neprimjerne in Etiopiji svetovali naj ne ustraja pri tej zadevi. Kazalo je, da etiopici pri doseganju pravice ne bodo nič uspešnejši od jugoslovanov. Da Mussolini a Badoglio, da Graziani a De Bono, da Lesson a Pirzio Biroli, da Geloso a Gallina, da Trachia a Cortese, Tutti i maggiori responsabili dei genocidi africani sono rimasti impuniti, quando non hanno ottenuto altri onori dall'Italia repubblicana e democratica, mentre è in atto un processo di riabilitazione per alcuni di essi da parte di biografi faziosi o compiacenti. Mussolini è vero, è stato giustiziato, ma non per i crimini in Africa. Graziani è stato processato e condannato, ma non per le stragi in Etiopia ed in Libia. 